and terrain. Today, there's a bustle in your hedgerow. Don't be alarmed. We're going to be making these hedges out of nothing but styrene, basing material, paint, lichen, and some hot glue with, from the hot glue gun. That's it. Super simple and quick. I've got a couple other examples of how I tried to make them that was not as super simple and quick. So you can make them the way you want. But we're going to make them quick, easy, cheap. That's the way we like it here on Campaign Terrain. See you after the bomb. Here's a little clearer example of what we're working with. These are hedges that will stop line of sight. It'll stop your, the character from being able to go through. They could hack through if they needed to over time, but it's gonna slow them down if they're in the way. So they're the art of scale. They're a little bit over an inch and a half tall and they're very simple, very easy to make, and we're gonna jump right on into it. Let's talk about basing them. You can base these hedges on just about anything you want. You can use quarter inch Luon, you can use MDF board, you can use cardboard, either the thick or thin stuff. You can use the pressed card, like on the back of a uh, notepad or the stuff used from food packaging. You can use anything you want. I went with this stuff called Masonite, which is really glossy on one side and has this sort of herringbone texture on the other side. I chose it for two reasons. One, I had it readily laying there and wasn't being used for anything else. And second, it's fairly heavy so that they'll stay upright. The top of the wall is just uh, styrene, so it makes the walls very stable if you attach them to something heavier like this. So that is why I opted for this. I did look into a very, very heavy card, but it took, no kidding, about 20 passes with the knife to get a smooth edge on this, and that just wasn't gonna be easy and simple enough for me to show you guys. So that's it for bases. I'm using masonite, but you can pretty much use anything you want. Here's some of the styrene walls. It's just a piece of foam core with the sides peeled off, the paper peeled off. If you live in a country where you can't get the one where it peels off easily, it's not gonna matter. We are going to completely bury this. So if you have it with the paper on the sides, that's absolutely fine. If you use the cheapy stuff where the paper peels off easily, we are gonna be painting this. And when you paint it, that's going to wanna peel off. So if you have the cheapy stuff, peel it. If you don't have the cheapy stuff, leaving the paper on is fine. So it's just this regular everyday foam core. This is what it looks like unpainted. Here it is on my mounting rack as when I go to paint them, and here they are after they're painted. And you'll notice that I have not gotten these any kind of even solid coverage. I've just slapped the green on there. It's all gonna be covered with uh, shrubbery in a bit, so this is just to keep any bits of white from peeking through. Here are some textures I experimented around with. This is the glossy, glossy side of the masonite, unpainted. I like the tan, the tan is good, I don't like the glossy. So here's the glossy side painted. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just the glossy side with the paint on the wall. This one, these two are done the same way. What I did is I painted the base with the boom, that's my brown I use for everything, it's half glue, half paint, and then placed that Into a tray while the boom was still wet take just your regular construction sand this is the multi aggregate it's got or the aggregate I guess it's got some fairly larger pebbles all the way down to some very very fine sand in there and what I did was while it was still wet I just take them and buried the whole base and after you leave it to dry you end up with this base once you've got that base this is what I call the sanded base then this is the sanded base after it's finished painting. So this has been hit with the boom, then the sand, left to dry, and then hit with the boom again, the brown paint. You notice there's no texture on the walls. It doesn't matter if you get any texture on there accidentally, that's fine because it's gonna be covered up with the bushes. So that's the four examples of that. Here's a little bit closer example. This was hit with the same way as that long one. This has the brown, then the sand, then the brown again. This, but the wall was glued on first, 
which causes a lot more of the gravel to be to end up stuck in the ruts where the paint has gathered. This piece, I did the sand to it and almost none of the gravel stuck and then I glued the wall on after. If you look at the finished piece, which I'll show you in just a moment, none of that texture is going to matter. None of it. Doesn't matter at all. So what I have opted to do is not texture any of them. The ones I've already done, I'm gonna keep, obviously. I'm gonna take the masonite, attach the wall, then attach the lichen. To do that, I've dried the wall, I've, I've had the wall painted ahead of time and let the wall completely dry before I attach it. Discuss how I make the bases and the walls and then I'll get into the walls and how I paint them. Everything is gonna be a one inch strip. So the walls are one inch, a one inch wide strip turns into a one inch, wall, wide to, uh, one inch tall wall. A one inch wide strip on a base becomes a one inch wide strip or base. So both of those are one inch. Everything's one inch. Now my sizing, I make these four and a half. I've talked about my scale in other videos. I will hopefully remember to put a link up this way for you about my scale video. So I make these four and a half inches and I make these four, or I make these three inches and I make these two and a half. That leaves a quarter inch at each end. Now the lichen is going to stick out further than the end. And I want that because that way I can take them and butt them up against each other and they'll be fine. And it will block any hole between there. So there's a quarter inch depth inside there where the lichen is attached. All right, now I'll be right back to get into the walls. Okay, there's nothing amazing to the walls. I've talked about how I paint thin pieces of foam before. I use pins and I go through the back of what I'm painting on and then I take a piece, line it up on the pins, be careful not to jab yourself, and just keep that straightened up. It does not matter if they come through. I'm going to try to account for that, but it does not matter if they come through because as I said, this is all going to be hidden. I, this is just to keep them so that you can paint them more easily. The bottoms do not need to be painted. They're going to be glued on, so it doesn't matter if the bottom goes all the way to the bottom cardboard where you can't get any paint under it or not. So I just put it all the way down because it keeps it more stable. So once I've got all those, nothing special to it. I take my green boom, shake it up, it's glue and paint, and I slap a coat all over everything. It does not have to be perfect. We're going to cover it all up with lichen and we're just hiding the white. And it comes out like this. So I've pulled all of the pins out of the back, stuck them into my handy pin cushion. Here's a trick for you. I learned this when I was doing a lot of LARP costuming. I took a piece of the EVA foam, that's the floor mat foam, and just glued it to a board. This happens to be a sample of a, uh, of a floor covering. And I just double spray, I just spray adhesive to the foam, stuck it on. Easy pin cushion, heavy, stays where I need it. I use it all the time. Okay, so these are now held on just with the paint. I'll go ahead and pop one of those off. As I said, I want to keep these with the textured side up, just to so it's not shiny. And I'm going to attach it right in the middle. Now the easy way, I tend to get a little crooked and wonky on things. So I take a pen, and I don't necessarily want the pen to be visible, so I'll start a little ways in. I'll just eyeball where the middle point is and I'll go between these two points and draw a line. And that gives me a rough guide to where to glue the wall on so that I don't, I don't have any of the black exposed, but I, have the, I don't have the wall sitting wonky either. So, use my friend the hot glue gun. Love hot glue, it's my favorite glue. Again, I always use this on low temp when I'm working with foam so I don't melt it. So this is a dual temp gun, but I have it on low temp. You can see that in the picture on the handle, I believe. If not, I'll show you in a second, but a lot of them have a switch and I have mine on low. Then take that. Oh no, my bag drop. It's all right, it'll be fixed by the next scene. And go ahead and 
stick that down. As you can see, I got that fairly well centered. It does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be centered end to end. It does not have to be centered across. You can put it diagonal if you want. You can put it all the way on one edge if for some reason you wanted the hedge pushed up against something. You can do it however you want. I'm just going for close to the center and that's fine with me. So let me uh, get my lichen ready to glue, to glue on and I'll be right back with several of these ready to go and I'll reset my backdrop. Backdrop is repaired. I know y'all care. So let me show you. I just pulled these off of here. One of them left a little piece attached. It doesn't matter. It's not going to matter. Once it's on the board, it's going to be completely hidden. Nobody's going to care. So as I said, this is super simple and easy and very forgiving project. It's very difficult to mess this up. So we've got these. They're fairly well attached. I just ran that first line bead of glue on there and that should hold them plenty well. If you want, you can run another bead of glue on each side of here, but you don't have to, especially since we're about to coat this thing in glue and attach lichen to it. It's gonna hold itself in place. But let me show you what's going on with that. So just so it shows up more readily on camera, since this is dark, I'm gonna go with some of the light. I'm gonna attach a few of the light pieces. Now this lichen, you can get at any craft store. It comes in about 20 different colors, some of them funky and weird, like purples and pinks and yellows, which are great if you're going for an alien scene or something like Underdark or something like that, you can get all sorts of neat, cool colors. If you just want to say that your adventure is taking place on a planet where nothing looks like Earth, that's fine too. So there's lots of color choices available. I'm just going with some more traditional ones. I'm going with some light and dark. The reason I'm showing you the light is because it contrasts with the green I've got so you can see where I've pasted it, where I've post, uh, yeah, pasted it on here with the hot glue. So there's nothing to it. Attach some glue. Maybe make sure your stringers are gone. Take the piece you want and attach it in place. That's it. Lather, rinse, and repeat. Just keep doing that till they're done. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna finish up these four. I'm gonna make two that are, I'm gonna make one that's solid light. I'm gonna make one that's solid dark green. And then I'm gonna make two that are mix and matched. Let me finish those up and I'll be right back for you. Special bonus, I thought of two other things to show you. When you're going around the end, what I like to do is Take a little bit longer piece and run the glue up the end and all the way onto the top and then take that piece and follow the contour around. That helps to really hide these corners of these pieces. Now I've rounded these off. You can leave them square. You can cut them diagonal, however you want to do it. But I've left mine just a little bit rounded on the top corner. And here I just follow that around. That's the first bonus. The second bonus I've showed you is, I want to show you is these lichen shed like crazy. So you're going to end up with all these extra little bits left over that work great for moss. They work great for clump foliage. Keep these. You can use them for all sorts of different things. I have a whole box just for plant, what I call it, plant detritus or detritus. I don't know how to pronounce that word. So that's two extra bonuses. All right, let me finish these up and then I'll be right back. So there you have it. Simple hedgerows. Shorter ones, longer ones, different colors, solids, whichever. All super easy, super simple to make, really quick. I hope this video has been entertaining and educational and we're basically done. I'm going to come back with a couple wrap-ups. I'm going to show you around, show you these set up around one of the houses that I built from last week's video. If you want to stick around for that, great. If not, also great. Make sure to uh, share this with your friends. Please, please share it. Also, like and subscribe if you've liked what I've been bringing to you, and we'll see you next time. See you in just a few seconds after the bump. So there you have it. Simple, quick, cheap, Make them in a matter of minutes. Use them as scatter train by themselves. Attach them to other pieces. Use them standalone or conjunction. There you go. Hedges all day long. Hope you've enjoyed your all that you've been seeing here on Campaign Terrain. Please remember to share us, like us, and subscribe us. I love you. My name is Cross. I'll always be your host, and we'll see you next time on Campaign Terrain.